democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to the Virgin Islands, to the U.S. Virgin Islands, where Hurricane Irma made landfall as a Category 5 storm just over one week ago, knocking out electricity and running water, cutting off communications with the outside world. Now, eight days later, U.S. Virgin Island Governor Kenneth Mapp says the islands of St. John and St. Thomas are still nearly entirely without power. The hurricane also destroyed schools and the main hospital in St. Thomas. The devastation was so extensive, it can even be seen from space. Satellite images show the U.S. and British Virgin Islands were green and lush before the storm, while the post-storm images show the islands are mostly brown after the hurricane uprooted nearly all the trees. Earlier this week, a U.S. military amphibious ship arrived on St. Thomas, laden with equipment and supplies. The islands have also received emergency aid from residents of the nearby island of Puerto Rico, where volunteers banded together to collect supplies and transport them on dozens of ships. But while Hurricane Irma hit the U.S. Virgin Islands days before it made landfall in the Florida Keys as a downgraded Category 4 storm, the Virgin Islands overall have been largely forgotten in the wall-to-wall -wall U.S. media coverage of the storm. And that omission is even more striking, given that the U.S. Virgin Islands are in the midst of celebrating their centennial, a hundred years as a U.S. territory. Well, our next guest, award-winning author Tiffany Anique recalls how she learned about the widespread devastation on her home island of St. Thomas, not from the scant U.S. media coverage, but from her Aunt Cecile, who texted her in the days after the storm, quote, "'The post office is gone, grocery stores gone, schools gone, hospital gone.'" In an op-ed for The New York Times headlined, "'Americans in a Battered Paradise,' Yannick goes on to write, quote, as we have, over the last 100 years, we ask again with this storm, what kind of Americans are we? Are we part of a multi-tiered system of Americanness? Do the real Americans know about this? Are you real Americans okay with this? It doesn't seem particularly American to me, she wrote. Well, for more, we are going to Tiffany Anique herself here in studio, the award-winning poet and novelist from the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Thomas. She's an associate professor of, uh, in the English department at Wesleyan University and the author of the poetry collection Wife and the novel Land of Love and Drowning. We welcome you to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's so good to be here. So, tell us about your island. And tell us what's happened now, what you understand, um, and then the history of this island. Most people don't even understand that there are which countries are which islands are territories, which are U.S., which are Dutch, which are French. Can you explain? Yes. Uh, the Virgin Islands is made up of both the British Virgin Islands and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And our Virgin Islands is St. Thomas, St. Croix and St. John and the smaller surrounding islands. Um, often we are confused with BVI or even with other islands that begin with Saint, like St. Martin. Um, but I think it's important that the nation really recognize who the Americans are in the Caribbean and pay us a little bit of extra attention. Uh, one of the things that happened for me when I was trying to find coverage about the Virgin Islands and about my home was that I was seeing lots of things on television about the region. I was so pleased, as someone who is from the Caribbean region, to see that there was beginning to be some attention to the Caribbean in mass. And it is true that the United States has a responsibility to the Caribbean as the most powerful economic force in the region. It's important that we pay attention to St. Martin and St. Martin, which are Dutch and French. It's important that we pay attention to the British islands. But lo and behold, we have American citizens in the region as well. And these are not just American citizens who are visiting as tourists or American citizens who are, have newly moved to the Caribbean, but we have American citizens in the U.S. Virgin Islands who are born American citizens, uh, who are American citizens by virtue of having been born on American soil, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I was really quite remiss and saddened to see that uh, the news media said that Irma had made landfall 
in U.S. soil when it hit the Florida Keys, which, in fact, it had made landfall on U.S. soil days before when it hit St. Thomas and St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Mm. So talk about your Aunt Cecile. Talk about your family uh, in St. Thomas right now. Well, luckily, uh, we many people on island do have phone service. Uh, cell phone service on certain parts of the island is possible. And I have been able to be in touch with Virgin Islanders on the ground. And again, not just Virgin Islanders who are evacuating, not just American citizens visiting or new American citizens who are evacuating the island, but American citizens, Virgin Islanders who are staying on the island and are working together to really build back the Virgin Islands already. And I have to say, the there's been an incredible amount of goodwill by private citizens in the Virgin Islands who are working together to, to bring things slowly back. Um, it is true that the devastation is incredible. The devastation is unbelievable. Not only the pictures that we have been seeing online, but the word that I've been getting from Virgin Islanders on the ground really demonstrates that it is unbelievable devastation. That being said, there are grocery stores that are now opening and are actually selling fresh goods to Virgin Islanders. Restaurants have opened and, and are selling hot burgers, sometimes giving them away for free as part of their service to the community. Um, Private citizens have been helping to clear the roads and um, and share clothes and food and water with each other. So it's devastating, but people have been coming together. So Puerto Ricans are helping? Puerto Ricans have been helping. And Crucians, who are from our neighboring island of St. Croix, have been helping. People are helping not by mailing things, because our post office is destroyed, but have been actually boating over goods. Um, often, again, these are private citizens who are using their private resources to bring goods over from Puerto Rico and St. Croix. And both Puerto Rico and St. Croix are, are American spaces. So these are our fellow Americans in the Caribbean uh, supporting us. and, and and helping us out in St. Thomas and St. John. Can you talk about the difference in <clears throat> aid between what, for example, France is doing when it comes to St. Martin and what the U.S. is doing when it comes to the U.S. Virgin Islands, what Britain is doing when it comes to the British Virgin Islands? Well, to be honest, Amy, when I first started getting information about the Caribbean being hit by Irma, it was via the attention that France was giving to its Caribbean colonies and its Caribbean spaces. Um, sorry, not colonies, but Caribbean spaces, and the attention that the British were giving to their Caribbean holdings in, in, in the region as well. It was impossible to find information about the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, the president of France is already on the ground in the Caribbean right now, um, surveying the damage with his own eyes. And a lot of this attention was happening before Irma even hit. Now, it is true that since Irma hit the Virgin Islands and then eventually the Florida Keys and Florida, um, by the time it hit the continent, it was downgraded, as you said, to a Category 4, whereas it hit the Virgin Islands, U.S. soil as a Category 5, what many um, weather experts are saying is the worst hurricane to ever hit the region. Uh, now we are beginning to get attention, and um, there have been some really great articles, uh, John Nichols' article in The Nation, um, and many other articles that are bringing attention to the Virgin Islands. But I was uh, watching Tom Bossert's, I think, September 12th um, report about the hurricane hitting the Caribbean with close attention. And he, uh, who is uh, the White House's national um, home security adviser, uh, he spoke about the Caribbean in uh, very focused ways, which, as a Caribbean person, I really appreciated. He talked about St. Thomas and St. Martin and the kind of attention that they were both getting from the U.S. But he lumped in the Virgin Islands with St. Martin as if they were really similar and exactly the same kind of spaces with the same sort of relationship to the United States. So it felt to me as if he was saying San Diego and Tawana were both hit by the same storm. And it's true. St. Martin and St. Thomas were hit by the same storm, but only one of those is U.S. soil. And we didn't get any sort of special attention from our fellow Americans. 
And I think that's an important thing to remember. Virgin Island people are Americans, um, and we're not only American citizens, but our land is American soil and should be getting special attention. I wanted to ask you about St. Martin, which is not the U.S. Virgin Islands, no. um, part of the Leeward Islands and the Caribbean Sea, it comprises two separate countries divided between its northern French side called St. Martin and the southern Dutch side, St. Martin. Um, interestingly, President Trump has a $17 million chateau on the French side of the island, in the posh neighborhood of uh, Plum Bay Beach. His mansion went unscathed. Well, this hurricane has really um, demonstrated the differences between the haves and the have-nots. And I would say that's happening even in the Virgin Islands, even in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, that um, homes where the families were prepared, had generators, um, they are showing electricity, they have running water. And then there are homes, whether it's public housing, that have been, in some cases, entirely destroyed, and those communities do not have running water. Um, so what we're seeing in St. Martin is being reflected in St. Thomas and St. John as well. Um, I wanted to go back in history, because this is so significant. This is the centennial. I wanted to turn to an archival video clip of Transfer Day, March 31st, 1917, when the Virgin Islands were transferred from Danish to American control. Denmark sold these islands to the United States for $25 million. The Americans arrived to take possession. This is the only picture in existence of the ceremony that marked the transfer of the Virgin Islands to the United States. The Danish officials come out to greet the Americans, commissioned to add this peacefully acquired possession to round out the geographical contents of the United States. The Treaty of Transfer is read by the American Admiral. This is your home. This is St. Thomas. Um, the Danish flag lowered, the American flag raised. Why did it happen? Well, the, the Danish and the Americans were in conversation for decades about trading the Virgin Islands as a space. Um, there were many people in Denmark who didn't want to give us up, and there were many people in America who weren't sure if it was a right uh, move for the United States. Um, it seems to me the historians uh, say that, uh, because of World War I and some other national security um, concerns, that it made sense for the U.S. to have some, some um, um, space in the Caribbean. And so we were bought in 1917, March 31st. In fact, my, my youngest son uh, is also born on March 31st. So this has national significance for me and cultural significance, but even personal significance. So we became um, Americans, sort of, in 1917. We actually weren't able to vote until 1970, 7-0. Um, and even in 1970, when we could finally vote for our own governor and legislative bodies, we still could not vote for national representation. In fact, right now in the Virgin Islands, we are American citizens and we carry American passports, but we do not have voting representation in Congress. Our Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett cannot vote in Congress. We cannot vote uh, for president of the United States, um, but we do uh, pay federal taxes. Uh, you were deeply concerned about reports of looting and how this was being conveyed in the media. Can you talk very quickly about this? Yes. Um, it makes sense that after a disaster of this magnitude—and I do want to say that, although things are coming together, the disaster is seriously destructive—that there would be some immediate desperation. So I think we can all agree that, that there would be um, some immediate concerns, people who, who maybe weren't quite prepared. However, the word I'm getting from eyewitnesses on the ground, from Virgin Islanders who are um, invested in the community and, and are on the ground in our shopping district and shopping areas, they're saying that um, stores are beginning to open, people are going in with their money and buying things, uh, restaurants are
are opening and selling drinks and selling food. Um, people are sharing resources. This is not a scene of looting at all. These are not looting conditions in the Virgin Islands. And I've been really disappointed by the national media coverage in this regard, even by journalists who are finally now on the ground in the Virgin Islands. It seems to me um, and I want to be cautious. I don't want to say that the journalists have been irresponsible, but I do think the journalists um, could be doing a little bit more uh, legwork to find Virgin Islanders who are part of the community and not only uh, visitors to the island who are evacuating and are leaving. And in many cases, they're under a lot of stress. They, they want to get back to their homes, which is on which are on the continent of the United States. Um, but that they actually, the journalists actually look at what's happening on the ground by eyewitnesses. The media coverage has actually said uh, looting, but it's been from people who are in their own um, admission, hearing this second and third and fourth hand, whereas what I'm getting actually um, does not relay looting conditions at all. And the multicultural, multiracial composition of the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands is a very, very unique part of the United States nation. For a hundred years, we have been working as a multicultural, multiracial, multireligious system. My own graduating, my own senior graduating class of high school, less than 30 people, was made up of people whose heritage and, in some cases, parentage were from Saudi Arabia, France, India, Nigeria. Colombia. We were a group of people who were Muslim, evangelical Christian, Catholic, Hindu, atheist, agnostic. And this is less than 30 people in a group, a graduating high school class. Uh, the Virgin Islands is a very unique place, but it's also a place where the rest of the nation is really heading in this direction. Whether we want to admit it as or not as an American nation, we are becoming a place where diversity and inclusion is our reality. And the Virgin Islands has been doing diversity and inclusion as Americans for a hundred years. I want to thank you so much for being with us. I hope you will come back so we can talk about your novel. Oh, thank you. Um, Tiffany Anik is a award-winning poet and novelist from the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Thomas, hit hard by Hurricane Irma, Category 5 storm. She's a professor of English at Wesleyan University, author of a poetry collection called Wife and the novel Land of Love and Drowning. We will link to her recent op-ed in The New York Times, headlined Americans in a Battered Paradise. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, the effects of these hurricanes have been massive in the Caribbean and the United States, but they actually don't compare to what's happening in South Asia. Over 1,300 people have died in the flooding in Nepal and India and Bangladesh. We're going to go to Kathmandu, Nepal. Stay with us.